All right, now we're going to go over how to calibrate your Veristroke 1 actuator. The first thing we recommend doing is going to the alarms and shutdowns page. Here we want to clear any active alarms or shutdowns that may have been triggered during commissioning. Once that has been done, so let's step to the configuration and calibration page. In the top panel, you'll see some information on how the, the Veristroke is currently calibrated. You'll see that the fail safe direction, in this case, is a fail retract. That our currently calibrated limits, or our stroke length, is at 0 to 203.2 millimeters. Our system initialization, initialization spring check, in this case, is set to no. Typically, this will be set to yes. And upon power up, the Vera stroke will run a diagnostic check to ensure that the servo return spring is intact. Here we have some current cylinder dimensions. These will be programmed at the factory if your unit is an integrated unit. If your unit is not an integrated unit and you are setting up a remote cylinder, you will click this button here and input some of your parameters. Here you will enter cylinder length, cylinder diameter, and position sensor length all in millimeters. The screen also allows you to invert the input demand such that 4 milliamps will demand the actuator to a 100% position and 20 milliamps will demand the actuator to a 0% position. Note that if your Veristroke came as an integrated unit, none of these values should be changed as they should be correct from the factory. If we step back to the configuration and calibration page, we can see that this pane here is now going to allow us to proceed with the cylinder configuration. To get this screen to appear, you'll need to do one of two things. You'll need the operating mode to display configuration. To get this to happen, you must take your analog demand inputs to zero milliamps or have the run enable function set to used and the run enable switch open. This will put the actuator in a shutdown, configure, shutdown mode and allow you to configure the stroke. Step one in cylinder configuration will be stability settings. The Vera stroke comes with an automatic tuning ability in which you will not have to input any sort of PID parameters. Instead, all you'll have to do is input the supply pressure and some of your desired slew rates. Here, we can input the pressure in bar to say 8 bar. We can set two slew rates. The first one is a manual slew rate. This will be the slew rate that the actuator moves at during the configuration process and manual operation mode. Once you've gone into actual demand mode and when the actuator is running, it will use the operational slew limit. In this case, we have it set to 500% per second, meaning that the actuator may be able to slew from end to end in just 200 milliseconds. This function will allow you to do a soft seating type function. This would mimic what you would typically see with a hydraulic cushion. Here you can set where the cushion would engage, which would be the slow zone edge, and the slew rate at which the actuator will move once, it's in, once the soft seating function is engaged. After inputting all of your stability settings, click the apply button. It will prompt you to make sure that your settings are correct. We click save. Those settings will then be downloaded into the Veristroke and we can proceed with calibration. Step two would be to calibrate the stroke of the actuator. To do so, you would press this button here. At the top of this page, you'll see a trend tool similar to the one you saw on the system information page which will allow you to track the information, track the position of your Veristroke at throughout this entire process. So let's go ahead and click start. In the bottom left portion of this screen, you'll find two options available for you to calibrate the stroke length of your Veristroke. The first one is the find minimum stop function. Once this button is pressed, You'll be prompted by a warning that shows you that the actuator is about to move to its fail-safe position if hydraulic pressure is present. Once we press this button, 
the actuator will attempt to move all the way to its fail-safe position. Once it hits a stop, it will calibrate this position as the 0% position. After that, you are allowed to calibrate in millimeters the offset and stroke length of the actuator. If you would like the actuator to not hit the minimum stop, you can offset it here, or if you would like the actuator to pull hard into the min stop, you can put input a negative value into this box. You can also limit the maximum stop position using this. Once you've clicked apply and seen that there are no warnings, you can step into manual position request. This will allow you to move the actuator during this whole process. For instance, I will move the actuator now to 100% position. You can see on the trend tool that the actuator is now moving up and has reached its full stroke. I can then modify the maximum stop position to any value I want. Click apply. And it will now move that down to that position. If we click save calibration, it will now calibrate the actuator at zero position of zero millimeters and a maximum position of 150 millimeters. After this, it will return to the fail safe position and take you back to the screen where you were before. If you would like to adjust the settings that you just set, you can step back to the previous screen using the adjust button. For the purposes of this, I will set the actuator back to 203.2 millimeters, which was the factory stroke length. Click apply and save once more. The second option you have to calibrate your Veristroke is the Find Minimum and Maximum Stops. This feature of the Veristroke will allow you to not only calibrate the minimum position automatically, but also the maximum position automatically. This warning will tell you that the actuator is now going to move not only to the failsafe position, but then automatically move towards its maximum position until it hits either an external stop or the end of the, the mechanical stroke. Before clicking this button, you want to make sure that your linkage or attachments can withstand the full stall force of the actuator such that no damage happens during this process. The actuator first goes to its zero position or the minimum position. It then slowly starts to ramp towards its maximum position. Once the actuator reaches its maximum of position and senses that it can no longer move, it will stop, set that position equal to the 100% position, ramp down, pause momentarily at 50%, then proceed back to the failsafe position. You'll then be brought back to this same screen where you can calibrate the offset and maximum stop positions, click apply, manually position the actuator and click save. Once you're done here, you can step back to the configuration and calibration page and proceed towards advanced configuration. The Veristroke comes with three advanced functions, first of which is a bandwidth setting. Typically your actuator will come with a bandwidth of 5 Hz. This is a default from the factory. This can be used to limit the bandwidth of the actuator should your customer want it to respond slower to small signal responses. The second is a dither function. If you're using your Veristroke to run a relay valve or some other valve that may have um, increased friction, and you wish to use dither, 
you can set that up here. Woodward does not recommend you use the dither function unless you are driving a relay valve or some other attachment that requires it. The last is the silt buster function. This function will flush out any trapped silt or dirt on a daily or weekly basis depending on the period you have set. You can also set the duration and amplitude to minimize the impact on the cylinder position. For more detailed information on the silt buster function, please refer to the product menu. Once you've set all these functions the way you would like, you can click the apply button and save that configuration. If you'd like to use the linearization function, you can press this button here. This can be used to linearize the steam flow to the actuator position. You can enable the curve here and put in a two-dimensional curve based on analog position and scaled position right here. For more details, refer to the product name.